So I think probably what would have helped me is a bit more self-discipline. It's so easy to, as a student, just to be like, oh, you know what, I didn't sleep that well last night. I think I'll just lie in and then I'll, I'll rock I'll up. I'll catch up later. Yeah. Yeah. Hey everyone, how's it going? So continuing on my interviewing series, I have got an extra special guest today. This is Jack, you guys might already know him. He's my lovely boyfriend. We live together in London. And I thought I would get him to tell a little bit about his life story because we met on the Emirates together. We did. So, we did. Fellow fellow scientist. He currently works in clinical trials. But anyway, I'm blabbering. I'll let him say an introduction and we can get into the questions. Okay, so I am a scientist too. I did my BSc in biomedical sciences at St George's mm -hmm. and then I travelled to America and worked in clinical pharmacology at a pharma company. Mm -hmm. And then I came back to the UK and I did my MRes in Translational Cancer Medicine with this gal. You met me, where, where I, I started ruining your life for where, the last two years. <laughs> where I just can't match that energy level. <laughs> no one can. It's um, then I finished that degree and now I work in clinical trials for UCL. So before I guess we get into like the nitty gritty of this, some of my viewers know that you apply for medicine this year. So do you want to give that, do you want to just update everybody on what happened, what your current status and outlook is? Because people have been asking me and I didn't want to answer on your behalf, so. Uh, medicine, okay. Uh, well, I'm not studying medicine this year. I didn't get in, but it's still very much on the books. I shall continue to apply. I don't think I'm going to apply this year because um, we'll get into it a bit later on, yes. but I'm changing my job roles to become a bit more yeah. clinical. Yes. So I'll have a lot more patient experience and hopefully that will improve my application for, for the next round. Okay, so I guess now that we've got that medicine update out of the way, we can start talking a little bit about your job. And why don't you tell us a little bit about the application process because I was around when you were making applications to yeah. this and I think there's a really good life lesson in there that I think Jack should share with you. So, actually it's funny because I, I, I really remember this. So w yeah. when we were applying, we, I applied to several jobs. Um, some were lab based, mm. some were sort of office based. Uh, and I looked at clinical trial practitioner roles, mm -hmm. clinical trial coordinator roles. I looked at some research technician roles, yeah. some research assistant type roles. And there was this one job, this clinical trial coordinator role, that obviously I ended up getting, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't think I would get it. Yeah. In fact, we, we both didn't. We, we both did it anyway. Didn't. Yeah. yeah. We, we decided, do you know what? Worst case scenario, you don't get shortlisted. What have you lost? Yeah. Anyway, so it turns out I was shortlisted somehow and I went to the interview and I passed the interview and I got in and I spoke to my boss at the end of it and I said you know you pointed out during my interview that I've got no clinical trial experience mm -hmm. why did you choose me what she said is there's lots of transferable skill sets that even I'm not aware of and depending on how you swing it you can uh, take those skill sets and apply it to a role that you didn't think you could initially do. Um, and, I, and I love that story because when Jack was applying for this job, like we, we saw it together and like I was kind of like just helping, being a supportive girlfriend. Uh, and when he looked at this, he was like, this looks amazing, it would be really good if I got the opportunity. And I remember even I was saying, oh, you know, it's great, give it a go, but don't get your hopes too high because it's awesome for a lot of the things that you might not necessarily have. And I remember you came out of the interview like flustered because he was like, they were so mean to me in the interview. <laughs> Really awesome. was a hard, so many... it was a hard interview. But I, I've said this before, I, I said this when I was interviewing Chelsea, who is our common friend, Jack knows Chelsea, we studied together. And she said a similar thing about interviews, that sometimes when they're really harsh and they grill you, that's because they like you. Yeah, my and dad you, said the same thing. It's funny, because Jack came out of the interview being like, I'm a terrible person, <laughs> I'm a terrible human, I'm a terrible worker, like no one will ever yeah, want to yeah. hire me. I said, I said, uh, what did I say? I said, they, I think they hate me, and actually I think I hate me too. <laughs> Um, but yeah. you know what, my dad told me a really good point. He said, you know, if, if they didn't want you, they wouldn't even bother to yeah, grill you. Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was a long like... interview, wasn't it, for like a really yeah, long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, it was quite long. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, just, just go to show, and I really wanted Jeff to talk about that story because I think it's very easy for people to fall into this thing where they look at something and they go, well, I'm clearly not good enough, so I'm not going to try you don't have much to lose, you know, like maybe you'll lose an extra like hour, half an hour of making the application, but you know, it could end up leading to really great well, things. I mean, put it this way, either you apply and you might get it or yeah. you don't apply and you, and you definitely absolutely won't. won't get it. So. Exactly. So that was the application process and then you started. So why don't you tell people who have no idea what a clinical trial is, what a clinical trial manager slash coordinator is. <laughs> um, so why don't you tell people about that? Because 
I can't, I'll try not to uh, be here all day, um, but basically what a clinical trial coordinator does, slash manager, however you want to call it. They have different names, but different similar names. Ones, yeah. Yeah. We coordinate a study, so a, a doctor may have this amazing idea, think, oh, I really want to create a clinical trial because I'm seeing certain patients in my clinics and they keep having the same problem and I think the NHS can change, so I want to create yeah. a clinical trial. So what they will do is they will come to a clinical trials unit because they have the expertise on how to run clinical trials. And, and sorry to interject mm -hmm. there, just, just to make it a little bit clearer, like, I know a lot of people when they think of clinical trial, <clears throat> they think of drugs. So a, like a new drug is come on the market and people are doing a trial to see if if it's safe, if it works. But Jack's trials are a little bit different because they're surgical. So they test out surgical procedures, is that correct? Sort of. We do have some CTIMP. The so CTIMP is like an abbreviation for a medical uh, like study. Drugs. Yeah, and they're a lot more intense. Like yeah. there's much more safety and it's a lot more stressful. Yeah. We do have some, uh, but yeah. my, my personal trials, none of them are. And we are a surgical unit, so mm -hmm. most of it is surgical. So it might be testing out, like you say, a new surgical procedure. New equipment. New like equipment. new, new something, yeah, you know. that kind like of stuff. The, yeah. yeah, new techniques. Yes. So at the moment, I run five clinical trials. That's Obviously, yeah, I can't go into like the specifics but when I first started in, in terms of what was in my job yeah. description I was supposed to run two clinical trials but I have a sort of semi good semi bad habit of saying yes to everything uh, <laughs> I'm the same yeah which is great because you get a lot of experiences but then you can you can find yourself overworked and so there's got to find a good balance there but now I coordinate five clinical trials and um, that's because I said yes to quite a few clinical trials and it's quite interesting yeah. for me because like they're all very different clinical trials yeah. so I think I've got two prostate trials I've got one a critically ill clinical trial um, I've got a head and neck cancer clinical trial and I've got a, a lab based actually mm. a lab based clinical trial which is a pretty cool yeah. one and that's really interesting because um, like not only not only do you get to like learn about like the science and stuff behind it you get mm. to like contribute to research without actually being in the lab which I know you like the lab but for any of you guys who love the science and the research but don't like like the boring pipetting then yeah. I mean, do look into it. I think what's really nice about this job is that you get to see a sort of bird's eye view of everything so when yes. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. working okay. in the lab like it was all very like super focused on yes. one molecule and all that kind of yeah. stuff whilst I now get to see the, what the research nurses do to contribute to a clinical trial, what the doctors do to contribute to a clinical trial, what radiologists do, imaging, I get to see the lab people, and I get to see the whole picture yeah. of a clinical trial and where each cog contributes in the, in the system to get an answer. It's pretty cool, yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. But what's interesting, and I think probably the point of this video is that when I finished my master's, there's no way I, I imagined yeah. doing something like this. This is an issue that I personally have consistently had, and I get a lot of you guys asking about the same thing, that there are so many cool jobs in science, in research, in health that people just don't know about. So I'm glad you're sharing your experience <laughs> with us. So I guess that takes me on to what I'm going to be doing next. Right? Well, before we get oh, into okay. that, I think you've said a couple of interesting things that I want to pick up on. Mm. I think one of the things that I'm personally interested in is about saying yes to more things. Because I definitely agree with you, I'm also that person who says yes, sometimes to my detriment. But as Jack said, we want to talk about what he's going on to do next, which is like super exciting. So how do you think saying yes to a lot of the things that you, that came your way, how do you think mm. those contributed to you kind of finding your direction. And the second thing, which I'll come back to later, is I want to talk a little bit about the multidisciplinary team because you literally get to work with everyone, like yeah. a whole range of people. So let's yeah. start with the first. Okay, so okay. saying yes to everything. Um, okay, yes. so basically... Within um, reason. <laughs> within, within reason. So I thought to myself, well, the reason I got this job was because of these transferable skill sets, right? So I Direct thought, feedback, like right from the beginning. Yeah, right, right from the right beginning. Right from the beginning, I, that's I, what he was told. Uh, that's what I was told. And I thought, okay, well, that's really good. I've, I've clearly got transferable skill sets. And then I got greedy. And I thought, I want more of these. <laughs> because yes. if this makes me employable, yes. I want some more. <laughs> So, therefore, I volunteered to help with other trials. Like I said, we're a small trials unit, so there's yep. always more work to do. And I thought, um, oh, that looks like an interesting study. Could I please have a look at that? And because it's a different uh, part of anatomy and there's different things that patients need to do, uh, I'm involved with different departments. So perhaps on one trial, I'm dealing with radiology, and then on another trial, I'm dealing with biopsies. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're all very different departments, and I'm learning more about how the whole system works. And then if I take it one step further... I volunteered to run our, for instance, run our surgical units website, right? So I've now learned to yeah. to 
create websites. Yeah, so I think that's really interesting because I think sometimes when you are applying to a job, it's not necessarily just what they want that's on the list. Sometimes it's about what extra things you can bring. And I mean, I'm a bit biased, but ever since Jack and I met and we were friends, even before we started dating, I would always say how impressed I was that you would that you would go the extra mile. You are like the extra mile guy. And that is like one of my favorite things about you. And I think sometimes we all do this, myself included, fall into that habit of right, good enough. This is good enough. But if you can just push a little bit past that good enough, you do get to reap the fruits if you like. And I guess let's segue into how you got this new role. How is it different? Why is it what you want to do? <laughs> and how did the same yes help? So, I, like I said, I first started off with two trials and then I took on another three. And then because I said yes to those three, one of those three, the CI, as I was talking about earlier, yeah. has decided to employ me as a clinical trial practitioner, which is much more clinical much more patient facing and much more down the eventual route where I want to yes, go you know down exactly. towards the medical and what does your CI do just tell them yeah, so his my, job role yeah my, like, my CI like... is a robotic surgeon so he uses these awesome cool. da Vinci robots <laughs> yeah uh, to do prostate uh, surgery to do prostate surgery yeah, yeah. Um, and in fact I can tell you this because it's in the news at the moment so um, the I'm link the article down below. <laughs> you know what I think it's, it's, if you're going to link the article, instead of me taking up the whole video explaining about this trial, I would just read it. It's a pretty cool trial. And I think, do you know what, just, just at the fear of like being overly positive, I think you should talk a little bit about like the trials and tribulations as well, because as you said, saying yes to a lot of things can lead to burnout. And I live with this guy, so mm -hmm. I, have, I have lived through all of like the not great things. So do you want to tell people about some of the challenges? Do you mean it's not been all great? <laughs> We're gonna. But this is gonna begin a domestic. Um, no, but genuinely, like, what are some of the challenges you face, and what what advice would you give to people so that if they do face some of the challenges you faced, mm. how they can work through them? So I think one of the things I first learned on this job, which is of absolute critical importance, and it's something that I always try and instill in you, is prioritization. Um, I am so bad. Yeah, I am <laughs> so, so bad. like, I, I, I run five clinical trials, but some are much more urgent than others. Yeah. And some have got timelines, some have got time limits, and depending on the task that you do, some are much more urgent than, than others. And so basically, depending on the level of criticalness, if you like, I can prioritise the tasks yeah. that I need to do. Uh, yeah, so that's a, that's a, a challenge. So staying organised yeah, and staying being organized. meticulous, which that is Jack's superpower. Like, whereas I think I, I work in a much more haphazard way i just like run around and do lots of bits and then sometimes it works and a lot of times it doesn't but yeah i mean definitely part a clinical drug coordinator meticulousness is like a a big deal uh, i remember yeah. in fact going back to my interview i remember yeah. i think i i must have capitalized something or i put some sort of spelling error in my personal statement and my boss oh literally circled it on my personal statement and was like you made an error but so yeah you have to be very precise because if you make a mistake you can end up very... causing some big no 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 yeah big Absolutely. issues um okay so what else what what are some what other challenges did you face why don't we talk about yeah that? so a challenge that i faced is i came from quite relaxed very basic science background working in the lab, um, oh, yeah, yeah. which I thought was, I loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. And you were saying I went the extra mile, really I was just doing more because I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, I'm a giant that, nerd. Yeah, um, I totally relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> but I went from that very flexible timeline, if you like, because you know we could sort of mm -hmm. come and go as we please as long as we got the job done, yeah. to a very strict regimented job, yeah. nine to five. And there are aspects of this job that I don't find particularly interesting. So yeah. for instance, there's a lot, there's a lot of emails and, yeah. and we get so many emails. I mean, replying yeah. to all of these emails every day, and then you set out to do it, one of these critical tasks I'm talking about, mm -hmm. but then you get suddenly you get a critical email, and you're like, okay, I've got to address this email first, yes. and then I go back to my... And so it took a while for me to get into the flow of things. Now I think I've got more of a handle on it, and ultimately you end up enjoying it more when you know what you're doing. <laughs> and do you know what? I think what you're saying right here is really important because essentially what you're talking about is a transition between being a student into going into a working environment. For me, it's been different because although I've been from a student and going to a, like a more, uh, I guess, professional environment, they were both in a lab. So it's still, it was much more similar to my master's. And the reason why I'm picking up on this point is because I have spoken to a couple of people who do a similar role to you who have said the same thing, that they found the transition between being a student, like even if you work in a lab or even just from university, going to a workplace quite difficult because mm. there are 
as you said, regimented, like you have to you have to be there at nine. You can't just say, well, okay, I'll get there at quarter past nine. No, like you have to be there at nine. Yeah. And there are all of these kind of things. So how would you, like, what would you recommend to students who are about to enter maybe their first job within, I guess, within a healthcare setting? What do you think would have made it easier for you before you started to be able to make that transition? So I think probably what would have helped me is a bit more self-discipline. It's so easy to, as a student, just to be like, oh, you know what, I didn't sleep that well last night. I think I'll just lie in and then I'll, I'll rock I'll up catch at up later. Yeah. yeah, I'll okay. rock up at 11 and I'll yeah. stay later. I mean, I myself am a night owl. You are an early bird. Horribly early. <laughs> horribly early. Horribly. <laughs> Yeah, literally, I get up at like 5am and just disrupt his morning until like 8 when he gets up. Anyway, continue. Anyway, so that works in uh, in your favour when it comes to an early rise, early start job, but it didn't really work for me so much. So I took full use of the fact that during my masters I could lie in, and I did, and yeah. I would stay late, you know, yeah, I'd yeah. leave at like 9 in the evening, and I was quite happy with that. Yeah. So I got into a routine, or I had to get into a routine of getting up at a re relatively decent <laughs> time uh, to make sure that I got in for the time I'm supposed to be there. But, well anyway, there you go. So anyway, I'm looking forward to my new role, yes. which will be a clinical trial practitioner. Um, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I'm, exci I'm excited for you the next to, step. So you get to like see patients. And yeah, so I'll... That'll be lovely. You get yeah. to have like a lot more patient contact, which is nice. Yeah, so I'll, I'll see patients, consent them to the trial, have mm -hmm. explain any questions. Okay, so thank you for all of that. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. And yeah, that was really informative. So for any of you guys who had been considering clinical trials or are just generally looking into options of what you can do with a biomed slash life sciences degree, Here's an example, you can go and do that. And if you've got any questions, you can... Oh yeah, of course, if you have any questions or anything related to the job, leave it below. Also, on a bit of an off side note, I think it might be quite fun for Jack and I to do like a Q&A together. Um, it doesn't have to be about work, but it can be if you like. And yeah, that's something fun that we yeah, do. Yeah. So if you have any questions for, for us, leave them below. I also have my Instagram, so you can DM me, send me questions on there. And yeah, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap it up? I should probably think of something. <laughs> it's all right. Good enough. You said words. <laughs> that was terrible. That was awful. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. Have you... Stop laughing. Have you thought of something to say? Um. No. Okay. <laughs> then I guess we'll wrap it up here. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in a future video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>